Thank you so much, Bill Brink. It's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you. Lovely. So Jeff is our welcoming trustee this morning. Go for it, Jeff. <laughs> Good morning on this Palm Sunday. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Meeting House via Zoom in Springfield. For generations, we have envisioned a better world, an earth made fair and all her people won. We welcome all who wish to join us in fulfilling this vision. My name is Jeff Taftik. I'm one of the trustees for the church. If you are a guest today, we invite you to simply enjoy being with us. If there are any uh, guests, friends who are joining us for the first time via Zoom, and you'd like to introduce yourself, please feel free to do so at this time. Raise your hand and someone will unmute you. 
or you can unmute yourself. You can do that. There we go. Here, okay. The, we're Adele and Adele and Scott McCall from Buffalo, and uh, we do have we we do have a relative there or two. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Betsy Suiko is our daughter, and Kayum is our son-in-law. So we are delighted to know that he's going to be here there today, and we wanted to join in. Wonderful! Welcome from Buffalo. It's great to have you with us. That's great. Um, there are, I believe, a, a whole series. If there's nobody else to introduce okay. themselves, oh, there is. Okay. Hi there. Yeah. Hi, I'm Christine Howe, or as Mellon knows me, Chrissy. I met Mellon when she was the consulting minister at the First Universalist Church in Barrie, and then through the Washington Congregational Churches. And this is a lovely way to connect. I'm currently all the way up. I live in St. Albans now. So I think it's nice that we have a nice energetic line drawn diagonally across the state. Great. Well, pray for some health and protection for everyone. Nice to meet you all. Welcome. Any others? Yeah, this is Lisa Farina. Can you hear me? Yeah. We yes. Yeah. Hi. We, we joined a couple of weeks ago, but we couldn't figure out our video. So I just wanted to say hi while we were on video. We live in Montpelier. So we're kind of, I guess, part of that line from Springfield to St. Albans. <laughs> and we have met uh, Mellon before at the Unitarian Church in Washington over last summer. So we're really excited to join by Zoom. That's my husband, Peter, in the background. He's attended in Washington, too. And this is my son, Anthony. So we're really happy to join you today. Hi. Hi. Hey, Anthony. <laughs> hey, everyone. Yes. Great. Yeah, I'm Any others? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, this is Mike. And Liz. From, and, go ahead. From, and we know um, Mellon as Chrissy does from the First Universalist Church in Barrie and, um, and also from Washington. Mm -hmm. And we were so happy to get your invitation yesterday, Mellon. It's just great to be here. Welcome. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Great. great to see you. And and we are the church in Barrie has done a couple of these Zoom meetings, so we're somewhat familiar with the muting and unmuting. Uh -oh. and, and that if someone's playing music, everyone else needs to be muted. <laughs> but anyway, great to see y'all. Any others? If not, um, uh, I think everybody, Mellon, has a copy of the um, Order of Service and there are a whole series of announcements attached to that. Is that correct? I will put, I will put the announcements up right now. Okay. And I, uh, will, yeah. and I will mute myself. Excellent. Great. So... You are welcome after we're done with the service. We'll have just a little five minute break, um, give you a chance to get a cup of coffee or tea or whatever, and then come on back if you want to chat and uh, hang out, meet some new friends, uh, connect with old friends. You're welcome to do that. And um, normally, once a month, we do an offering, and um, the, the name is gone. Oh, share the plate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're doing a, a, an offering to the Springfield Family Center. Um, they're very much in need of help right now. So you can mail it to them or um, uh, do, do online, springfieldfamilycenter.com. Um, and you're also welcome to do your donation to our, our congregation. You can mail it in or also we have a PayPal button online. So uh, just some business to take care of there. And then um, tomorrow night is our board meeting. And then um, April 7th, this is, this is uh, at least nationwide and maybe worldwide, Solve the Climate by 2030. Um, so, so you can get on and watch that. It's, it's, um, I think it's gonna be fantastic, the, the great lineup of speakers. And then um, Suiko is doing her meditation on Wednesday. And after that, we have our own local conversation about what we learned on the climate change thing. 
and then I'm doing a tea time on Friday in the afternoon, and this is by phone. So if there's anybody who isn't on Zoom yet or you're tired of Zoom, just just call in, and the number is in the uh, our newsletter. So easy to find. And then next week is Easter. I will be here um, offering an Easter sermon um, with some wonderful music, including um, Lynn is going to help me with it and some other people. And then the following week, Sharon and I are going to be talking about coping and thriving in the pandemic. So um, we hope you will join us for some or all of these upcoming events. And I will go up to the top. Here's our order of service. Yeah. So Sharon. Are you ready with the bell, the chime for us, Sharon? I can. Okay. Here. The words for our chalice lighting are from that great Sufi poet and somewhat comedian, Hafiz. He says, fear is the cheapest room in the house. I'd love to see you in better orders. Fear is the cheapest room in the house. I love to you in better quarters. The words of Hafiz. Come into this place of peace and let its silence heal your spirit. Come into this place of memory and let our stories warm your soul. Come in to this place of prophecy and power and let our collective vision change your heart. Welcome to our time of worship together. We are so glad that you are here. We live in interesting times, eh? It's really important that we stay together and that we stay strong. The sources around us are telling us we're at the beginning. There's more to come. Please know that this space, the Sunday morning online worship, will be a touchstone for you for the duration. You can come here to restore yourself with calm, with connection, and with hope. Stay connected. Stay hopeful, stay calm. And we are here to help you do that collectively. There are two pandemics going on. One of them is the pandemic, the physical one. The other is the pandemic of fear. I think maybe, there, maybe the fear one is just as bad because when we're fearful, we don't make good decisions. We don't think clearly. When we're fearful, we live in a contracted state. So the Springfield Meeting House is a place for you to find an antidote to fear and to strengthen you in your hope.
as as we have been talking about for years, really, at the, the Springfield Meeting House, what we meet, need more than anything is a shift of consciousness, even before the pandemic. Einstein says you can't solve the problems with the same thinking that created the problem. We need new ways of thinking to solve the multiple and complex problems of our world. We need a new way of thinking to lift ourselves out of our ordinary, limited way of seeing the world, lift ourselves up to new possibilities. And there are so many ways to get there to an expanded consciousness, so many avenues. And in our time together, in these coming months, we will be exploring and strengthening our ways of knowing how to expand our consciousness so that we can move out of that contracted space of fear into an expansive space of love, of connection, of unity, of beauty. You as a human being have this power to know this grandness of an expanded consciousness. It's your birthright as a human being. And that's what we're basically about here. And there's so many ways to get from a place of limited thinking, of fear, to a place of expansion. So many ways. Prayer is one way. Meditation, being in nature, music, art, connection. There's so many ways. So find your ways. Cultivate those ways. Make a commitment to your practices to get you through this challenging time. And one of the most fun ways of expanding our consciousness is through humor. And that's the tool, the practice that we are focusing on in this service. And I'm so delighted to have Kayum with us. Kayum is a resident of the Art Monastery down the road in Springfield, Vermont. Uh, he is a farmer, he's a Buddhist, he's an artist, he's a sculptor and just an all around wonderful person. So he has agreed to be with us today to help us explore humor as one of the tools to lift us into an expanded consciousness. So glad you are here with us today. We have a really, really great song. Lynn and I have been working on this song and this will be the first song we sing when we come back into the sanctuary together in Springfield for those of you who are local residents. So go for it, Lynn. Thank you. I so much, Lynn. I you like that one, Anthony? Yeah, wasn't that fun? That was great. I, I found that um on Facebook yesterday. I was like, yes, that is just perfect. So when we come back together in person, those of us in the Springfield area, we we'll sing that song on our first Sunday back and hopefully it's not too long off. So we have a kid's story today. And um, as, as I've been thinking about this, this whole challenging time, um, Jeff Tafdick, who is a member of our Springfield congregation, he has worked for um, like 30 years as program director, uh, country director for the World Food Program. And what happens is when there's a real challenge in the world, it's connected with the UN. So people who are really hurting need food. And so other countries channel food and it's, it was Jeff's job to make it all work. And um, so he saw some really, really tough times and really hard challenges. And he's gonna tell us something about what helped him get through. So go for it, Jeff. Thanks, Melon. Yes, um, during my 32 year career, um, I was mainly in Africa and Asia in um, third, fourth world countries um, using food aid for a variety of different projects, school feeding, mother child nutrition, uh, agricultural development, and then droughts and refugee crises and tsunamis and so forth. But um, so there was a lot of stress involved. The only time I ever served at our headquarters was in the 1990s for three years where I was the desk officer for Pakistan and Afghanistan. Again, two countries really uh, where there are a lot of, a lot of um, major issues and our staff tended to be very stressed who were working there on the ground. So my job was trying to do the best I could to support them. 
And it just so happened in 1995, my brother-in-law here in the state sent me a joke that I, it was just when we were all connected by email for the first time in the 1993, 94, 95. And of course, everybody started sharing jokes and humor with their friends by email. And so one, one Thursday night, I got a really good joke from my brother-in-law in the States, and I wanted to share it with my dozen or so international friends who were all working at headquarters. And um, so I put the joke, uh, got it all set up to be sent out, and I thought, uh, this was at the end of the day after the work day on Thursday, and I thought, well, what I'm, I'm not going to put joke as a title, because I didn't know what uh, Big Brother and IT might be thinking about that. So I thought, well, since tomorrow's Friday, I will put the I put the title TGIF and so I sent out the joke and all my friends wrote back and said oh that was a great joke Jeff but what the heck does TGIF mean and I realized they were you know African they were Swedish they were Italian French English um, but they didn't know what TGIF stood for so I, when I explained to them what it meant and it was thank God it's Friday they said well why don't you send out a joke every Friday so I started doing that in 1995, and I've been doing it more or less since then. Uh, when I retired, all my colleagues have begged me to continue doing it. Now, one of the advantages of it, which is linked to today's service, is that uh, we had a staff counselor, and when she uh, was added to my list, my list uh, got longer and longer with more and more people, and more people were sending it to their colleagues in the field offices. And she would travel around the world and go to these very hardship duty stations in Darfur and uh, Zimbabwe and other places. And she would come back and she would send me a whole list of names. She said, these people need this. They're stressed out. They need to have some humor to keep things um, balanced and uh, keep them sane. So even at a time when um, I was being encouraged to discontinue doing this because some of the higher ups in the organization thought this was frivolous behavior. She campaigned on on the side of humor to say, no, our staff need this. It's very important for them to get through the week to have some humor. So um, so she would send me the names and the email addresses of all these people and I would add them. And so um, um, I ended up becoming, I had a nickname in WFP, which was TGI Jeff. Um, and so that's how that's how everybody knew me. Even when I retired, they all made me promise that I would continue doing it into retirement. So uh, I have continued to 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 do it, and uh, it's a great hobby and it's a great way to stay in touch with people. And I think at these times of this pandemic, uh, it's needed more than ever to have some levity, have some humor, and to look on the on the on the lighter side of things. So as with ever as with every major world event. Uh, humor seems to come forward uh, and appears and, and everybody shares it with their friends. Sometimes it's a little bit dark humor and so forth, but I think we need it at this time. And of course, I've been receiving all kinds of contributions from friends about it. So I'm going to give you a few examples of the coronavirus COVID-19 2020 um, humor. Many parents are just about to discover that the teacher is not the problem. First time in history, we can save the human race by laying in front of the TV and doing nothing. Let's not screw it up. My cleaning lady just messaged me today to say she will be working from home today and will send me instructions on what to do. We're about two weeks, two, we're about two weeks away from seeing everyone's true hair color. And what's worse, two masked guys trying to rob you or your unmasked pizza delivery guy? Anyone else feel like life is being written by a fourth grader? And there was this virus and everyone was scared. And then the world ran out of toilet paper. Yeah, and then there was like no school for months. If you need 144 rolls of toilet paper for a 14 day quarantine, you probably should have been seeing a doctor long before COVID-19. And finally, now that we have everyone washing their hands correctly, next week, turn signals. Thank you for listening to my story about using 
humor to relieve stress. Thank you so much, Jeff. That's great. Yeah. I'm sure it served you immensely well in your many, many years with the World Food Program. Thank you so much. And, and no matter what it is, if we want to get better at something, the way we get better at it is through practice. So I remember years and years ago, I had a spiritual teacher who gave, gave me several laughing practices. So we're going to practice. So I'm going to unmute everyone. Unmute all. There we go. Okay. So this is how it works. There's, there's a few of them. So you start really high and go low with a laughing sound. And when you get to the low, then you go high again. And my spiritual teacher said we should do this every day. So if, you, if you're looking for an easy spiritual practice, here's one. Okay, so let's start really high. <laughs> Do that every day. Here, here's, another, here's another one. It goes like this. So you pretend you're in water, like up to your chest, and just splash and laugh. And you can splash the other people on the chest. <laughs> <laughs> if you're with people, you can, you can slash the people that you're with, too. <laughs> so so here, here's, here's one more practice. Okay, so imagine... You're way up on your cloud. You're looking down on the earth. You see the whole earth down there. And look on your life and look at all of your busyness and how important everything is in your life and all the critical things in your life. And now just laugh. As you look. <laughs> Those 14,000 toilet papers you bought. <laughs> if you want a spiritual practice, you can start right there every day. Three very serious laughing practices, do them daily because they're really important. <laughs> <laughs> so I. Abby, Abby. That's wonderful. Abby, come okay. sit with us. Yes. Okay. So, um, so to balance, <laughs> we, 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 we really do need spiritual practices daily. And laughing is one of them, breathing is one, meditation, prayer, being in nature. So find your spiritual practices that help you come to that expanded space. Feel how good you feel having laughed. You feel some of that oh, tension's oh. gone. You feel lighter. This is at your this is at your fingertips every moment of the day. The lighten up. The lighten up. And so now let's let's take that loosened up energy that we have and come into our body in an easy way. And Suiko is going to lead us in a chant. That will help us on our breathing, and I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everyone so we can hear. So we go. Okay, great. So some of you have done this song with me before, so I'm gonna up so you can just join in as soon as you remember it or pick it up. And there's choreography which you can also just follow along here. So I'll, we'll do the whole thing twice. <clears throat> breathing in, I breathe in. 
Breathing out, I breathe out. I am blooming like a flower. I am fresh as the dew. I am strong as a mountain. I am solid as the earth. I am free. Breathing in, I breathe in. Breathing out, I breathe out. Like the waters, I reflect what is real, what is true. And I know deep inside me, there's a place just to be. I am free, I am free, I am free. We'll do it again. Breathing in, I breathe in. Breathing out, I breathe out. I am blooming like a flower. I am fresh as the dew. I am strong as a mountain. I am solid as the earth. I am free. Breathing in, I breathe in. Breathing out, I breathe out. Like the waters, I reflect what is real, what is true. And I know deep inside me, there's a place just to be. I am free, I am free, I am free. Thank you. That's by Thich Nhat Hanh. Wow, that that I didn't remember. That was Thich Nhat Hanh. If you don't know Thich Nhat Hanh, he is a he is a contemporary Buddhist teacher. He's from Vietnam, one of our great uh, spiritual teachers on the planet right now. Thank you so much, Suiko. That's beautiful. And re remember, you can always find, that place is always in you. That place that place of calm, that place of ease, with all of the stuff going on. You can disconnect from it, use your spiritual practice, laugh, meditate, pray, and find ah, that easy breath. Find that place of calm within you that Suiko was just singing about. We, yeah, we can do it. So now is our time of sharing joys and sorrows. And um, you are welcome if you want to, um, in the chat box, um, very down at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a little um, icon that says chat, and you can click on that. And um, you can type in the chat box, a joy or sorrow that you would like to share, and I will read them out. And <clears throat> While we are doing that, while we are letting people post their joys and sorrows, let us say together the words for the affirmation, which some of us know by heart because we've been saying it for years. And um, this, this was actually written by the minister who served the church in Mary. And we have on the call right now some folks who... Our members or were members of that very church so um, this this is a this uh, prayer that is stated in churches all over the country um, originated right here in Vermont as so many good things do what can we say not to offend those of you non non Vermonters watching but uh, we're, we're pretty blessed to be in this beautiful place so join in these words but uh, love is the doctrine of this church the quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, and to serve all beings to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with the source of our being. The title of the service is the silly side of resilience. The word 
resilience. You know what that means? It means like bouncing back. When something's hard, rather than being crushed by it, you're able to kind of bounce back. And so the word resilience comes from the root selig, which means well-being or healthy. So it means to become healthy, re is again. So resilience means to become healthy again. And the word silly, it comes from the same root. So to be silly is to be resilient. So you could say, if you want to be resilient, if you want to bounce back, if you want to get through this time of virus, you got to be silly again. To be resilient is to be resillied. So let's resillify ourselves, be silly again, so that we can get through this. And um, I, I have a little story I want to share with you. Um, so, yeah, th this, this is a story about Hallie's mom. Some of you know Marion. Um, she was in her 90s. She passed away, I guess it's like two and a half years ago or so. And um, she was a member of our congregation for, for many years. And Hallie told us the story. So Hallie and Marion went into the doctor's office and the room had about 20 people in it. And everyone was just sitting there all quiet and serious and looking kind of unhappy and sick. And when they came through the door and Marion saw this, she said to Hallie, we got our work cut out here, Hallie. And Hallie knew just what she meant. And if you know Marion, you know what she meant. So Marion went into the room and she went up to this woman and she said, can I tell you a joke? And the woman said, okay. And so Marion told her a joke and the woman started, started chuckling about it. And then Marion said, can I tell you a story? And Marion told her a funny story. And the other people in the room sort of started to eavesdrop a little, hear, hear what was going on. And then Marion went to another person and told another joke. And the whole room started to kind of loosen up and lighten up. And before you knew it, people in the room were so much more relaxed. They were kind of talking to each other, more jokes and more ease. And, and what Hallie said is the whole feeling in the room was transformed. From when Marion came through the door and she spread fun, love, ease, kindness into this waiting room and transformed it into a place of light and ease. And we can all be such vehicles of light and ease for ourselves, for the people we love and for complete strangers. So thank you for the gift of Marion. I meant to bring an origami. I don't have one with me. Maybe someone has one right here. We can put up an origami. Marion folded origami a lot and uh, yeah. So thank you Hallie for telling us that story about Marion and the, although she's not with us in, in physical being, she stays with us in spirit as a great, great example. So let's hear from Kayum. More thoughts on silliness and humor and the wisdom. Ah, there's my voice. <laughs> Hello, friends. Good morning. Um, I hope everyone is relaxed and maybe not too relaxed. Just a little <laughs> louder, Kayum. Just a little louder if you can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can talk. I can talk. How's this? <laughs> How's that? I wanted to, to welcome everyone to their lives, the new reality of their lives. Um, I wanted to just say this is such an honor to be with you in this way, this surreal way, <laughs> this new way of being together. Um, I hope we can relax, uh, you know, lighten up. It's not the end of the world, unless it is. <laughs> in case, you know, we might as well have a good time. Um, I, uh, spent the last 12 years of my life in a Zen monastery, which is not 
which is a strange mix of very serious and uh, incredibly humorous. Uh, everything is highly detailed in a Zen monastery. Um, uh, the foot that you step into the meditation hall is dictated. Uh, what everyone wears is highly important. Uh, the gestures that you do and how you do them is incredibly detailed and uh, very important. So I, I have some stories about living in monasteries. The, the first that comes to mind is uh, uh, a young acolyte, a monk, enters a monastery. It's a silent monastery. It's very strict. They're devoted to the well-being of the world, and they believe that silence is, is, the, is the narrow road to accomplish this end. Um, so the elder monk who inducts him into the order says, welcome, you'll have 10 years of silence. And after that time, we'll check in and you can share a couple words with me. So he enters into the order, endeavors wholeheartedly in his, in his practice, um, dedicating the merit to all beings, thinking of the poor. After 10 years, the elder monk, uh, gestures him over in silence and, you know, welcomes his reflections. And he says, bed hard. The elder monk says, thank you so much. That was, please continue. 10 more years pass. Again, he's gestured forward and he gets to share his two words. And he says, food bad. Thank you very much. <laughs> 10 more years, he says, I quit. The elder monk says, I'm not surprised. All you've done for 30 years is complain. <laughs> so maybe this is like a good image of our life, right? We're, we're in the midst of, we're in the midst of our life. And yet we, we want to say something about it. We want more. Um, and we want to be heard. So I've been reading about laughter and laughter like yawning apparently is contagious. And it's also shown that generally people don't laugh alone. So laughter is actually a, 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 commu a relationship that's generated in community. Um, so it's culture building and it's a way in which we actually release, you know, another theory is that it's a way that animals shake off the fear of a passing predator, you know, that you see an animal, a deer who escapes in some of these nature videos, they, if they escape, then they do this vigorous shaking. Um, so there's something perhaps about moving our diaphragm and grimacing. There's also thoughts about laughter being a way of moving through grief, um, that you know, the, the grief face of extreme sadness and also the grief face of extreme happiness, they're, they're very similar in the body. These are some thoughts I've been having about uh, resilience. Another quote, a definition I, I found about resilience that felt true was by a woman named Karina Fidel, who's an activist in Detroit working for social justice. She says, the way the water knows just how to flow and not force itself around a river rock. In that way, then surely I can stretch myself in the shape of my own path, the way my own life is calling me to respond. So this, this makes me think of a Zen story that um, I've been thinking about this year. Uh, it's one, one of the koans from the, from the Chinese Zen collections of the Tang Dynasty in the eighth century. Um, and these are, these are, as you probably know, these are paradoxical stories that, are, that don't have an answer per se. They're not meant to be contended with, with the logical mind. Um, they're intended to sort of leap, leap beyond um, right brain thinking. So this story is brief. It, it involves a student and an elder teacher, a, a Zen master. Uh, the Zen master is at the end of his teaching career, maybe the end of his life. And the student um, wishes, to, wishes to know, you know, to glean some knowledge, to ask an appropriate question that can sort of address his suffering and address his pursuit of wisdom. And he 
uh, the way he phrases the question is, uh, what is the teaching of a lifetime? So what is the teaching of a lifetime? So after all this time of practicing your spiritual pursuits, dedicating your life to the well-being of others, um, cultivating generosity and compassion, patience, ethical discipline, wisdom, all done with a certain energy, a whole life, a whole life of teaching. Um, what is the teaching of a lifetime? Your lifetime or the lifetime of any person? And the master's response is, an appropriate response. The teaching of a lifetime is an appropriate response. So um, how does this manifest in our life? I, I think of uh, my, one of my favorite prophets is Allen Ginsberg, the, the poet. Um, and he was asked, uh, he was teaching on prophetic writing and uh, a student asked him, uh, how does one become a prophet? And Allen Ginsberg says, you tell your secrets. So you share your heart, you reveal. Another one of his quotes is, uh, candor ends paranoia. So telling secrets and being speaking frankly, speaking with candor is also often one of the pivots, I think, for humor. And also one of the ways we cultivate resiliency. Back to the Zen story, this idea of an appropriate response to our life. Um, is deeply compelling uh, and doesn't have an answer. The, the appropriate response uh, may be grief. It may be sobriety. It may be a lot of inwardness um, at moments. And the next moment may be very different. So I think what this teaching, for me, my understanding of the teaching is that it's pointing to a responsiveness, uh, a resilience, and a fresh a fresh, bringing oneself fresh to the moment. Um, so some days during these very interesting times, uh, the appropriate response may be inwardness. It may be a lot of self-care. It may be um, tending one's own garden, looking, looking a narrow view around one's family. Um, and then the next moment, it may be, sharing some of these amazing jokes that Jeff just shared. Uh, it may be looking at cat videos. It may be, you know, uh, going for a run. So finding an appropriate response. Um, there's also something about uh, the placebo effect in humor where when we antidote ourselves I think for me, what this is pointing to is a, is, a, is, a, is a lifelong study of the way I take my life incredibly seriously. Um, even though I know that it is not serious and it is, it's only my life and it's constantly changing. And yet I continue to reify this self. So this fear, this clinging, this armored self that uh, Mellon is talking about us becoming released from is something that we're constantly being invited to study. Um, and I think this is, again, one of these radical pivots of humor is pointing to the fact that the emperor has no clothes. Like we do not have any solid ground to stand on. Everything is shifting every moment, always. Um, and we know that we're going to die on the one end and we don't know how long our life is going to go on. So in in this way we can sort of we can we can take up a, a radical view of openness and um as it seems like this congregation is doing as all these practices are pointing to this openness begins and is sustained and can only take place in our bodies so i would invite us to sit up in our seats to do another just like momentary embodiment practice. This is one that uh, Tibetans love to do. They sit cross-legged for hours and then they kind of get their chi moving by shaking their hands this very, very fast, very fast, and letting it move their bodies, sitting upright, the top of your head reaching to the sky. 
going longer than you think you want to, maybe. A little bit longer. Stretching, moving, whatever feels appropriate. And how ridiculous is this? This is the ridiculous quality of being a human animal. To be in our bodies and to do things, particularly as we get older, we find that our, our range of expression reduces down, right? So we don't do things that we would do when we're turning 12 years old. So here we go. Ah, finding our way, finding our way. I just glanced at the clock. I should probably stop. So maybe stop. Ah. And then after, this is an exercise you can also do anytime that is so deeply funny. Because it's like, what were you doing before you were shaking your hands? You have no idea. I don't know what I was, what was I saying? So there's this openness that's possible. It's also possible at the end of your exhalation, you can breathe out fully. And before the inhalation, there's just a gap. There's this space. So in that space, play occurs, radical liberated play is possible. So maybe feel that in your body for this moment right now. And I feel like I should stop because it's after 11.05. Thank you so much. I wish everyone great health and well-being. And if there's anything I can do personally, our quarantine ends on Tuesday. I'm happy, happy, so happy to be of service. Please be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kayum. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I, love, I love that practice. Thank you so much. Yeah. We can make ourselves loose and silly and open again, open the possibilities. That's great. So let us move toward closing. I'm gonna blow out our candle, our chalice. And remind you of <clears throat> McCoy's advice to tense up and then loosen. Remind you of laughing and shaking practices that can shift your consciousness out of fear. Remind you of Chrissy's wisdom about just hum, hum to shift yourself. And remember this place, the Springfield. Meeting House online, 10 a.m. every Sunday for the duration, a touchstone of calm, of community, of hope. So stay connected, stay connected. If you have found community here, treasure it. If you have found challenge here, go and sit quietly with whatever is stirring in your heart. And if you have found hope here, spread it out into the world, the world that needs you. Uplifted, joking, connected with the depth of your own beautiful being. May it be so, blessed be. Amen. Sharon, you have the, the bell for us. I will unmute you.